InfoWars host Alex Jones has just received a surprising new offer from the Sandy Hook families who he defamed and was found guilty of defaming. They have not only won lawsuits against Alex Jones, they won massive, massive penalties that he's supposed to pay to these families to the tune of $1.5 billion. But he has declared bankruptcy, I believe, in an effort to skirt his responsibility and his legal liability here. And as a result, the families are now opening to settle, settling that debt for just $85 million. So let's get into the details, okay? We'll come back to the settlement offer, but first, we actually do need to go through the timeline of this legal back and forth to really fully understand why the families would settle for much less. Now, earlier this year, the Sandy Hook families asked a judge to order that Alex Jones be forced to make those payments regardless of his bankruptcy status, which both he and his businesses had already filed for. Last month, the judge ruled that the in the family's favor, but he actually shaved the payment down a little bit from 1.5 billion to 1.1 billion. Now, the Sandy Hook families have now presented Alex Jones with two options for how to pay them. Either liquidate his estate and give the proceeds to creditors or pay them at least 8.5 million a year for 10 years, plus 50% of any income over 9 million that he makes per year. According to Jones's business, that latter option still isn't doable. So free speech system said it could afford to pay creditor. By the way, we should take what free speech system says at face, we shouldn't take what they say at face value. Okay, you should take it with a grain of salt. But they say that it could afford to pay creditors about 4 million a year, down from an estimate earlier this year of 7 million to 10 million annually. The company said it expected to make about 19.2 million next year from selling the dietary supplements, clothing and other merchandise Jones promotes on his shows, while operating expenses, including salaries, would total about 14.3 million. So again, take any number from Alex Jones with a grain of salt, because his finances are super sketchy, and here's what I mean. As Alex Jones continues telling his InfoWars audience about his money problems and pleads for them to buy his products, his own documents show life is not all that bad. His net worth is around $14 million and his personal spending topped $93,000 in July alone, including thousands of dollars on meals, which I can believe, and entertainment. So more specifically, Jones spent $7,900 just on housekeeping and dished out more than $6,300 for meals and entertainment, not including groceries, not including groceries, which totaled nearly $3,400 or roughly $850 per week. Now he could be inflating those numbers just a little bit to avoid having to pay the families he victimized after their own children were slaughtered in a mass shooting. But I am curious what you think about all of this was, because this is a common tactic that we've seen with corporations, for instance. They'll declare bankruptcy in order to skirt their legal and financial responsibilities and liabilities. Yeah, at this point, it becomes a battle of lawyers and forensic accountants, right? That, that, that's the point that we're at right now. I think they're smart to dangle a sort of carrot in front of Alex Jones and say, look, there's there's a number that we think you're more than capable of hitting and we can be out of your hair um, instead of this thing looming over you and your business indefinitely. I think that's smart on their part. But, you know, of course, Alex Jones is just like, oh, okay, so they're willing to do something. We'll try to get them at a lower number than what they've dangled out there. And so, you know, at, the, at now it's just a negotiation, but I, I just really hope that they're able to get some level of recompense because what this guy did was just completely disgusting and horrible. And for what? Right. For views on YouTube to sell, you know, dick pills and all kinds of other supplements. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing to me how I mean, shameless you have to be to victimize families whose kids were killed in a mass shooting just for money. Like I get that we live in a country where money is valued over human lives all the time. But how do you do that with a straight face every single day just to, and by the way, the other thing is there was an audience for that. 
right? Alex Jones lying about the Sandy Hook families, calling them crisis actors, alleging that what happened at Sandy Hook was nothing more than a false flag operation meant to take guns away from Americans. Like, how do you just say that with a straight face, day in, day out, knowing that members of your audience are literally going out of their way to harass these families? I always bring up the Posner family because they had to move seven or eight different times because of the security issues they were dealing with, because of the harassment and threats they were receiving from members of Alex Jones's audience. And that's the other thing. The fact that there is an audience for that kind of content, that there are Americans out there who like eat it up and believe every word that comes out of that guy's mouth. Like what happened in the days of, I wanna get my information from a credible source, right? I mean, anytime I get a little testy on the show, if I get a little heated or passionate, people are like, oh, Anna lost her temper, can't take her seriously. Gotta stay calm, <laughs> gotta stay calm. You look at Alex Jones, he's about to like pop a blood vessel any moment. And they're like, nope, that guy knows what he's talking about. Totally, 100%, totally believe him. It's amazing to me. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I've become, cuz one, I do know a fair deal of conspiracy theorists in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I'm not one myself, but where back when I was a little bit more, you know, just epic lib in my views, I found them to be completely and wholly um, ridiculous and not credible. But when you really sit back and take stock of the amount of failures, and lies and distortions and corruptions of American institutions that have come out essentially since Vietnam, man, like it's pretty freaking staggering. So yeah. it's not hard for our citizens to be like, I don't believe anything. You know, the news institutions want to tell me, the government institutions want to tell me, look at these financial institutions robbing everybody, look at the damn church letting these priests rape people. It's like mm -hmm. so many of these institutions have failed people and lied and covered it up along the way. I have a little bit more sympathy for the audience of people who just, you know, not that they want to think that families that had their kids killed are liars. It's just like, man, the news and the government be lying to us all the time. Maybe this is another one of those lies. I mean, for me, it's just like, <laughs> to what end, right? Like, where are these mass gun gatherings at? Mm -hmm. Where is it? If that was the case, all right, cool. If that was your theory, show where is it? Where's the momentum for it? Where's the, where's like, where is it? Where is it happening that people are going to get their guns taken away because people lied about some mass shooting in Connecticut? It's nuts. Yeah, no, and look, you make such a good point. And thank you for bringing me back to reality and helping to ground me in, in why Americans would believe a charlatan like Alex Jones over, you know, legacy media outlets, the establishment. They have been lied to many, many times. And they look back at that and they're like, I'm not gonna believe what, you know, these established media networks that are bought up by corporate conglomerates have to say. I'm not gonna believe what our elected lawmakers have to say. They lie to us all the time. And so you're right, that does create a situation in which people still want information. They still wanna be informed. They wanna know what's happening in the world. And they're gonna gravitate toward you know, some sources like Alex Jones, unsavory characters who really have no interest in telling them the truth either. But he has presented himself as this fearless truth teller and that branding has worked, unfortunately. But at some point, after you're watching him like sweaty tooth madman, like having a complete episode live on your screen, you should, I mean, just yeah, at a, a certain moment. point, the guy's got to <laughs> deliver some damn goods. Yeah. Like at a certain point, um, all of us who took the vaccine, I say this all the time, we never grew that third ear. Not yet. It never happened. It never happened, <laughs> y'all. I'm sorry. You, you were wrong. It's at a certain point, these conspiracies, something has to be proven to be right. At a certain point, this guy has to deliver on the government coming and rounding up all your guns and the government's gonna do this and the blah blah. Like at a certain point, can you deliver on any of this? Do you just never need the truth to, to actually be proven to you people? You know, that that's what I would say to them. Where's the freaking proof?
Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want. No corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button. Become one of the Young Turks.